Hey guys, it's Mark from Migraine Professional. Today, I'm going to be answering the question, why do I get migraines and headaches from not eating? So what's really important to understand is that 80% of those with of migraine sufferers with aura and without aura will be triggered by skipping meals and fasting. And that is huge. That is one of, if not the biggest trigger of migraines and headaches. So we have to address this. We have to understand there's a breakdown in metabolism if we cannot properly fast. Because whenever we fast, we go into a ketogenic state. Now, traditionally, culturally, over um, ancestrally, we were naturally exposed to periods of fasting, periods of famine, periods of time when there wouldn't be food, there wasn't f food in high supply, or let's say we lived in the northern re regions, the ground would freeze in the winter, we wouldn't have any vegetation, any sources of, of fruits and vegetables and carbohydrates, so we would have to depend on animals and fish, which are sources of proteins and fats. So whenever we start eating lots of proteins and fats and we don't have a source of carbohydrates, our body switches over. Now there's two fuels, ketones, which is made from the breakdown of fatty acids and fats, and glucose, which is made from the breakdown of carbohydrates and sugars. So when we start eating lots of animals and we don't have a source of uh, fruits and vegetables and carbohydrates, we switch over to ketosis, like the ketogenic diet. Now ketones, they're protective. They're very protective for the brain. They're very anti-inflammatory. And a little bit of ketones are always required and always made in a healthy individual so that it can feed cells, it can protect the brain, it can make sure that our metabolism is running properly. But what happens in sick individuals, especially those individuals that don't have a really good tolerance um, or really good gauge of their ability to digest or consume or the amount of uh, glucose, sugars, and carbohydrates that they can tolerate, what happens is that you get huge amounts of carbohydrates coming into the system. So you have a big meal, lots of carbohydrates, lots of um, grains, or lots of high glycemic foods, what happens is your body will release insulin. So insulin, um, whenever we eat a food that has lots of um, carbohydrates, lots of sugars, eventually that sugar enters the blood. Now when the sugar enters the blood, the body says, oh no, it wants to regulate these, the, our blood sugar levels. It needs to have a really tight uh, level of blood sugar so that it can maintain homeostasis, maintain balance. If it goes too high or it goes too low, we can have a coma, we can die. So it really wants to maintain this. So what it does is it releases insulin. So insulin attaches onto the receptors in cells and it opens them up. It opens them up like a door so that glucose, the sugars that are in our bloodstream, that are in our blood sugar, can enter the cell and it can come out of the blood to keep our blood sugar nice and stable. Now what happens, if we keep sort of spiking our blood sugar and having to release insulin, what happens is that this kind of, the ability for insulin to open up the doors of the cells and let glucose in starts to get numbed. It starts to become, the cells become resistant to the insulin. So we keep having to use more and more and more insulin. Now, what starts happening is that we start deregulating our blood sugar levels. We, we start getting drops and spikes and drops and spikes. So in a normal healthy individual, you have a meal, your blood sugar comes up, you release some insulin, and it balances out for a couple hours. You can last four, five, six hours without a problem. And then your blood sugar starts to drop a little bit. You get the feeling you get a little hungry. You, your blood sugar starts to drop. You get a little hungry. You eat a meal. And then again, it comes up and then it balances out again. And so there's a nice smooth, there's, there's small spikes and, and drops, but it's fairly smooth. It's fairly regulated. Now, in an unhealthy individual or an individual who's constantly eating lots of carbohydrates and sugars and glucose and constantly eating lots of foods that are high on the glycemic index, they continue to spike their blood sugar. So what happens is they have a meal, they spike it. So when, it, when you get a really big spike, your body dumps insulin because it has to keep the sugar out of the blood. So it dumps insulin to bring that sugar into the cells and then you get this drop drop of blood sugar. So as soon as, whenever you get a drop of blood sugar, your body releases a stress hormone called cortisol. Now cortisol, it's a stress hormone, but it's also an energy hormone. It's what wakes you up in the morning and it's what gives you that fight or flight reflex. Whenever you're stressed, you are worried about something, it gives you that fight or flight reflex and it, it gives you energy in the morning. So when you have a regulated amount of cortisol, it is good. 
It's anti-inflammatory. It gives you energy. But when this starts to spike and drop and spike and drop, whenever you need more of it, it uses up lots and lots of resources. It becomes very inflammatory. It becomes very, very destructive to the body. So then you get start, you get this these cortisol spikes, with these cortisol spikes, and then because you have bad blood sugar regulation, you're getting sort of both of them, and they're roller coastering. So between the cortisol, the insulin, and the blood sugar, they're all kind of um, they're all going through this roller coaster, and it's giving your brain a ton of problems. Inflammation, it's tearing it apart. It cannot produce energy properly. It does not have a nice, smooth flow of energy. Now, what happens in a metabolically adapted individual, an individual that doesn't have a broken metabolism, what happens is that the ketones will be released as soon as we don't have enough blood sugar. The ketones will start coming up and it will balance it. Our body will continue to have enough energy. It won't cause this need to spike the blood sugar and drop it, spike it, drop it, cause it causing, causing this roller coaster that creates a ton of problems. So really there's a, there's a couple of different pieces here, but what we wanna understand is that first off, we have to stop kind of running that roller coaster. We have to stop eating way too many carbohydrates, way too many sugars, way too many foods that are, generally they're non-animal foods but the biggest sources are like grains and potatoes and sugars, um, too many fruits. You really wanna be careful, especially if you're getting this seesaw. If you're getting tired around meals, if you're getting triggered by meals, you want to repair your metabolism. So you wanna bring down your carbohydrates. You wanna use complex carbohydrates and use less of them. And with any meal that has carbohydrates, you wanna pair it with a protein and a fat. You want to eat high quality fats and high quality proteins, no conventionally raised um, meats. You want to use pasture raised, you want to use grass fed. Same with the fats, you want to stay, stay away from hydrogenated fats and having too many polyunsaturated fats. You want to stick with the, with the really high quality fats, but you want to make sure that every meal that has carbohydrates has proteins and fats as well. And you want to start building it up. You want to start sort of giving your body a chance to make ketones. Now ketones happen anytime that there isn't a, a constant supply of blood sugar, of, of sugar for the blood. And, but you wanna do this slowly and you wanna do this very carefully because if you're getting triggered by fasting and skipping meals, if you get triggered from an hour of, of missing your meal time, that's a big sign that your metabolism is broken, your body isn't dealing with that well. So first, the first thing you want to do is just start regulating it. And then once you've developed some stability, once you've regained sort of um, clarity and, and the brain fog is chilled out and you're not triggered as easily, then you can start building up your sort of ability to break down fats and use fats for energy through ketones. So this, this will, will go slowly, so you'll slowly start to increase the amount of, of fats in your diet, slowly decrease the amount of carbohydrates, making sure you're still eating lots of, lots of dark leafy greens and lots of uh, fibers, soluble and insoluble fibers to make sure that your blood sugar stays balanced. Then you kind of, you eventually, the goal is to work up and to be able to fast because fasting, it's a normal survival reflex and mechanism, and it's a, it's a, it's amazing, it's an amazingly powerful adaptive feature. Because ketones are incredibly protective, because like in epilepsy, uh, ketones protect the brain, and the ketogenic diet has been shown to be amazing for both epilepsy and migraines and headaches. So you want to be able to kind of adapt to using ketones as energy and so that will start with slowly um, you do start doing things like intermittent fasting intermittent fasting it's basically where you cut your eating window in the day so if normally you'd eat at eight in the morning and then you'd eat again at eight at night you would cut that down to a 10 hour eating window so and then you'd cut it down to an eight hour eating window so you would let's say you'd eat your first meal at 10 in the morning and then you would eat your last meal at uh, eight in the evening and then you start shortening that window as much as you can, kind of playing around with if you need to have a big meal before bed, if you can last longer um, 
in the morning, but you want to make sure that you're developing that stability first. And that's by balancing your carbohydrates, your carbohydrate intake, stimulants are really big. They're a really big problem with blood sugar. You want to be careful with stimulants, but you want to make sure you balance your carbohydrates with proteins, fats. And if you ever have too many carbohydrates, you can always balance them with some liquids, with some water. And before every single meal, you want to make sure that you're drinking, you're getting, um, a couple cupfuls of water at least half an hour before each meal so that your body isn't dehydrated because the less um, water you have in your body the more uh, if you put some sugar into it the more it's going to spike your blood sugar and you have less of a tolerance there so by slowly regulating your blood sugar and then adapting your body to be able to fast to be able to produce ketones which is the breakdown of fats and fatty acids for the use of energy and kind of maintaining a stable, uh, stable um, state of energy for the brain. You'll be able to kind of last longer in between, in between meals. You'll, be, you'll do much better with um, either eating meals that are unbalanced and you'll be able to avoid getting triggered by skipping meals and fasting. So I'm going to link to uh, an article in the description two of them. One is on what to do if you're triggered by migraines and headaches from not eating and after eating. And the other one is on 10 super simple blood sugar stabilizing snacks. So let me know in the comments, what is your biggest trigger? Is it fasting and skipping meals? Um, how does it trigger you? How does it come on? Let me know in the comments. Thanks. Hey, it's Mark from Migrant Professional. Thank you for watching this video. Make sure to subscribe in the bottom left corner so that others can find this information as well. If you want to learn more about migraines than you've ever known before and how to deal with them, make sure to go to our website. Thanks.